Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. This week, we're joined by Eric Alexander from Retro Rogues Live. We learn exactly how many queens of hearts is too many. And somebody put B4 in a drawer. Good day, everybody. Welcome to Starfleet Underground. It's the podcast where three out of five Cleons always recommend amputation. We're here today with our special guest, Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hello, this is Eric Alexander. Hi, what do you do? Introduce yourself. I am the uh, co-host of the uh, Retro Rogues Live uh, show, uh, which streams on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. And I am also the chief financial officer of Bad Bob Productions, which is a small production company in Arizona. Oh, that's pretty cool. Thanks for joining us here. And Heather, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I am so psyched the card is out. I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, next, Fred. How are you doing, Fred? Hey, everyone. I'm doing great. Uh, just all excited about the new uh, Picard series. So looking forward to discussing it. And Rocky. Good morning. I'm uh, I'm anxious to see this new show called Lost in Space. I heard it's really good. <laughs> Wrong podcast. <laughs> Wrong podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, for those of you that have come back, welcome back. After our first uh, episode here where we talked about Picard, you know, spoilers and whatnot. Now I'm assuming that everyone here who's listening have seen the first episode. If not, this is going to be filled with all kinds of spoilers. So, red alert. Oh, that was my cue. Yeah, but that's okay. You can add that afterwards. <laughs> 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 this is going to be filled with all kinds of details and possible spoilers for the next two episodes. So, thank you for joining us again. Um, we're going to be reviewing everything that's happened in that episode as well as possible chains that are carrying into the, the second and third episode here. So what did you guys think? Eric, since you're our guest, what did you think of Picard, the first one? Well, I love the opening sequence. I think I'm, I'm with the vast majority of fans, uh, regardless of how they felt about uh, this first episode. I really love the opening scene. Um, yeah. I did get fooled. I did get fooled a little bit because I thought uh, that that was going to be the theme song for the show. I thought we were watching like the intro for the show. And I didn't realize that uh, that there there was a whole nother theme to the show, a whole nother song. You had your whole song. Blue Skies t-shirt ready to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I um, wish, I sort of wish they kept the Blue Skies as the intro because I liked that. That was cool. It was beautifully done. It, it really was. It definitely was, yeah. But but seeing the Enterprise D was was awesome. It gave you tears a little bit, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It was it was it was just fun to see that again. Oh my god, I was freaking out when they zoomed in, and they're playing poker. They're playing poker together, like the old days. Yeah, that was really nice. One thing that I did notice about that scene, um, you know, the the uniform that Data was wearing was uh, off. I mean, it wasn't. The uniform that they wore in the Enterprise D, that was the the style of uniform they used in the movies when they were on the Enterprise E. Interesting. So, yes, that's so correct. That was, that was you're correct. Of, yeah, that's a good catch. I didn't I didn't realize yeah. that, but you're right. That's the cool. new movie uniform, not the actual TV series uniform. Right. And then 10 Forward, of course, didn't look exactly like 10 yeah. Forward. It was a little I, different. Of course, I, think I didn't recognize it. Yeah. The set must have been destroyed years ago, but uh, it looked pretty darn good. Either that, I'll throw, I'll throw them a Wait lightsaber. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait. Oh, my God. That's not the same set. I thought 10 <laughs> Forward, they just sent it to Star Trek Las Vegas, and I'm taking pictures with it, thinking it's the set. It's not the set? <laughs> it might have been in the background. <gasps> oh, my whole world is destroyed. Oh, my God. I don't think I could look at anything the same way ever again. <laughs> okay, but I, wanna, I, I got a technical question here for you, Heather. Because I'm not a card expert. I don't understand all these games that they like to play, the card games. Mm -hmm. How many hearts of queens can you get? <laughs> not five. In, in a single hand. If there's five queens, then someone's messing with the cards. <laughs> I noticed that, too, when you like put down five queens. I'm like, wait a minute. They're not using the single deck, are they? <laughs> it didn't look well, like it, right? Deck. It well, was a special, special deck, deck. I mean, Data has a tell, right? I thought that was hilarious. That, you Either know, 
does that. an Android have a tell? But yeah. either that or Data had a queen stuck up his sleeve. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I was kind of wondering about is it was interesting that he had five Qs. Does that mean that uh, you know, maybe maybe Q? That's uh, interesting. Oh, have that's interesting in theory. Story? That could be interesting. Yeah, could Q come into play? That would be cool. I'd like to see Q again. Like maybe in episode five. <laughs> That would be Ooh. a really cool Ooh. thing. Ooh, Fred, that's pretty sneaky. I like that. I like that, <laughs> the good, too. The good news is that they might, there's a possibility because you know who's coming back. There's Guinan. Guinan, yes! uh, Whoopi was I, that's true. I yes. very yes, clearly, yes, 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 very yes. clearly heard kittens from 300 miles away being yep. had. The second <laughs> I clicked that link and read it and goes, oh, Heather's got to see this. Oh, yeah. And I already saw it. You sent it to me and I'm like, I'm already squealing. I already <laughs> saw it and I'm already over here freaking out. It does take time to travel the sound waves 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, true. Yeah, she literally had kittens. Yep, I did. <laughs> And it's my new it's my new segment today too. I'm going to be talking about that. Cool. Now, that was something we had uh, brought up on the first episode on some of our prequels. If you the listening audience, you can always go back and check any of our past episodes. We've talked a little bit about our hopes and dreams that Guiding would come up, and it seems that the Great Bird of the Galaxy has actually heard us. <laughs> so that's going to be amazing. Um, a little bit of a lifesaver here for those of you that picked up on uh, what Fred did about the uniform and whatnot. I I think they had artistic license because technically it was supposed to be a dream. And so I feel that maybe he mashed what he remembered of data from Nemesis as opposed to his favorite time being on the Enterprise D. So I might be stretching here, but that's what how if, I gave them a little bit of a leeway. What if the people who created the show just like uh, got confused about the ships and it was a mistake? Yeah, it was just a flub. That only happens in the animations. No, that happens in Game of Thrones with Starbucks. Oh. <laughs> well, no, I, I was hearing somebody talk about on one, on one other podcast I was listening to. They were talking about the short treks and they had the animated one where they had the, you know, the oh the, yeah the dot, dot and, and, uh, and what's it face. Yeah, it was, it was I mean, that was a whole fan, fantasy fun sequence anyway. But they noticed that the Enterprise at one point in time had an A on the 1701-A and it wasn't supposed to at that point. And I'm like, Ooh, that's right. apparently set off a lot of people. And I can imagine <laughs> oh, yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's a big detail. Triggered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, triggered. They were redoing a uh, scene from the Wrath of Khan where... Yeah. And they're like, oh, uh, that A's not supposed to be there yet. You know, exactly. Kind of and then they were redoing like, you know, Star Trek three where the Enterprise gets destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the self-destruct scene. Yeah. It's not supposed to have the dash A at that point. And that's correct. That's, I believe that's the scene they were showing when it happened. So, yeah, little details yeah. like that. But, you know, when you're in a dream sequence, everything can be just a little bit off. I mean, that's that's the way I dream. Not, nothing's exactly right when I'm dreaming. So I can understand having some slight off things in, in a dream sequence. And, and I think that's a reasonable explanation, you know, because it wasn't uh, presented as a uh, kind of like a time travel flashback. Right. It, it was like universe kind of. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's a dream, like you're saying. But it was just uh, something interesting that I noticed. And then, like I said, the, the five Qs, uh, that made me wonder a little bit, like, you know, maybe... You know, Q's going to come back. I, I know Guinan is coming back, but that's going to be in the second season. The other theory I've heard is that that's a reference to the Borg Queen. Ah, that's another one. Queen that's of the yeah. Yeah. Cube, Cube side, that, that's a good pickup. Yeah. yeah. That's a wonder if that's going to be a, a case because we already know that the Borg is going to be featured in this. How exactly? Not quite sure yet. So, but yeah. it, it looks like it's going to be really awesome um, to put a pause on this just for a heartbeat because we skipped over a section. Totally my fault because I did not have my Earl Grey decaf yet. <laughs> uh, we're going to go over news. <laughs> Any news you have there, Eric, that you want to give out to our listeners? Yeah, I'm going to delve right into a into a big one uh, that's uh, creating a little bit of controversy, which is the logo for the Space Force, the Space Force logo. Uh, it's caused uh, Star Trek to trend, uh, Gene Roddenberry to trend, Starfleet to trend. Wait a minute, uh, Space a, Force as in Trump Space Force? Is that the yeah. same one? As, as in the United yes. States Space Force. Yeah. What happened? So, yeah, but, yeah. I didn't hear this. If you put the logos with Starfleet's logo and the the Space Force logo side by side, it looks literally, literally copied over, like maybe some slight design changes, but um, it's clearly serious? influenced by the Star Trek yeah. logo, the Delta. No so way. I, 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 did some, uh, I did some research on this. 
So uh, if anybody just Googles the uh, U.S. Space Command logo, it looks almost exactly the same. That was designed in 1982, and uh, it looks almost exactly the same. And I actually called my uh, friend who was a, a lieutenant in the Air Force and was talking to him about it. And he actually remembers when he got out of uh, officer training uh, school that he had another uh, a new officer who was going to Space Command. And the way she described the logo was it looked like the Starfleet the Starfleet Command. Well, you talk uh, to logo. some of the uh, the Air Force guys. I had a guy that when I worked in college, he was a, a computer instructor and he had uh, actually in the in the Air Force worked in the if I if I'm understanding everything correctly, because I could get these things a little screwed up. But he actually was one of those guys working in the missile silos. And those guys freaking love Star Trek. Yeah, but I just wanted to put that out there that if you Google the 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 original U.S. Space Command logo and compare it to the to the Space Force logo, they're almost exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty. Yeah. They're, it looks like there's precedence. Um, wow. I mean, yeah, and, I don't and think I do they're... think the original logo is based on Starfleet. I absolutely think it's based on Star Starfleet. But I just yeah. wanted to point that out. So. Well, that makes me happy because if anything, it pushes Star Trek more to the front of everybody's mind. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a to add on to what you just said there. Picard has got the biggest premiere viewing in history, if I read that correctly. So it broke oh, wow. records. Somebody oh, there was one article. Wow. It made it sound wow. like um, Star Wars was, you know, kind of failing in the movie industry. But Star Trek is exploding right now because of Picard. Uh, and I don't know how yeah. accurate all of that stuff is, but you kind of feel like Star Trek is uh, hitting all thrusters right now. Yeah. <laughs> now, now Star Trek being a, a streaming show, do they publish any equivalent to the Nielsen ratings like for regular TV don't. shows? I no, bet you I thought, it's a secret. No, with the Nelson ratings. Okay, so the Nelson ratings it's changed. Nielsen um, ratings, what, right? What are, I butcher yeah, all yeah. names. If I'm not butchering names, I'm not something. I'm just trying to Dude, help. I'm okay, just trying I, to help. If I'm not butchering names, I'm one of the pod people and you need to run. Okay, so the Nielsen ratings changed it where now they actually send you a device that you hook up to your either monitor or computer. So when you're watching YouTube or a streaming service or any of that, it catches it. So they are getting that information. They are getting that data. Yeah, but it's not going to be any more accurate than what they were really doing before, if you ask me. I mean, they're only taking a certain sample size and mathematically it's, you can look at it statistically and say, I think yeah, it's, it's, more it's accurate. pretty accurate, but I just, you know, I'm kind of, it's all mythical voodoo to me. And I was right, the one who worked in broadcasting. <laughs> right now, a machine is the one that's actually getting the data. So humans aren't writing it down. Whereas in the 1990s, 1980s, when you had to do it, you actually wrote down what you watched for how long, from what time to what time. So there's more a likelihood of mistakes being made, being written down versus is a computer catching it. I, I will agree with you there that a machine can get it a little bit more accurately because when you write stuff down, you just fudge it any which way you want. A human can do yeah. that. However, if you look at people like my parents and see them try to work technology, <laughs> I just, I'm just a little <laughs> suspicious how accurate this is going to be for everybody. You know? Well, the, the other question I would have is uh, like, it's been a long time, but once I, I did get a, like a Nielsen's uh, survey card and it was uh, focused just on, you know, like uh, TV, regular over the air TV and cable shows. Yeah. That's the old yes. one. Yeah, streaming gotten, services weren't weren't even covered by it. I've had Nelson ask me to do ratings like more than five times, and they recently just asked me to do it again. And when they said, oh, we're going to put a device on your TV, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're <laughs> not going to see how I get my TV. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Well, the, one of the big controversies uh, pro uh, previously has been that they only used the, the TV viewings. Uh, so it, they wouldn't count like uh, if you were watching on your laptop, for, for for instance. Well, I was always the thing they were doing recently is uh, they look at the TiVo recordings and they do it plus so many days because, you know, you record it yep. and you watch it maybe a couple days later. But if you watch it like a week later, you don't get counted. And oh, you know, really? I'm a busy person. So I think they need to count them all correct, you know, uh, over a month, maybe. Yeah, they but do that to plus seven ratings. The, That's how yeah. Netflix decides whether or not if they're going to pick up a show that's been canceled. Oh, really? They look at the plus seven ratings as opposed to the live network tends to look at the live more. But now with everything going towards streaming, that's changing a lot. So how are the Picard ratings determined? 
well, I know the only rating that I read so far has been fresh uh, tomatoes, gave it a fresh tomato. They're talking it's a really fresh rating on it. So the people at Rotten Tomatoes loved it. Everybody that I've talked to out, out there that were like discovery haters and, and really poo-pooing on Star Trek, they loved the first episode of Picard. I mean, they, they absolutely, I looked on all social media platforms everywhere. It was really difficult to find anything that anybody said that was negative about the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand that. I meant in terms of uh, viewers, in terms of how do you determine you how many people actually... have to ask CBS All Access, because they know exactly what the numbers they, they're are. They're the only one that yep. really knows the actual number. They know exactly they've got right, a little how, download how counter that it. clicks every time somebody hits a button. But but that information isn't uh, published, correct? No, they're not going to tell anyone. They, they might yeah. tell their advertisers, yeah. we're kind of doing this, um, but yeah. they're, they're not going to tell the public, and, no, and their advertisers aren't going to tell either. Right. Yeah, that's a big controversy with the uh, streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was saying. Like, unlike uh, you know, TV and cable, where Nielsen at least gives you an estimate of the number of viewers, there really isn't anything equivalent then for streaming services. Well, they got to be out there because Game of Thrones actually wind up. They said broke all download records for pirated. How else would they know? There's got to be a way for somebody to get numbers somewhere. Yeah, yeah but, and they can't figure out all the ways to to download. They're probably just counting torrents or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I make fun of how they can you take the numbers and m manipulate them, but they they really actually mathematically do it as scientifically yeah. possibly correct, and uh, they can get pretty good estimates. So if somebody's giving you a number that they're from a reputable organization, you're probably in the ballpark. So I have no doubt that Star Trek. If I mean they're making another, they said another season before the dang thing even started. So that's how good the numbers are. It doesn't matter. You know, they're, they're seeing numbers from interest from people just watching the trailers and whatnot. And everybody's jumping on board and they want to put their money into something people are going to like. And that's definitely Star Trek Picard. Yeah, it's not often that's you see a, uh, a series approved for a second season before the first episode comes out. No, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah. And then they talk about Section 31. Like, they're going to do that, too. They're they're gung ho. Star Trek is gung ho right now. They're really into it. Good, as they should be. I mean, <laughs> yes, TV, right. TV shows have sort of they're they're rehashing a lot of things and i think it's a great idea that they actually pick up a series that they already have a ton of fans for that we want to see more of but they're yeah. not giving it to us i do want to point out though that that two seasons of picard is not going to equal the same amount of episodes as you know one season of uh, I know. tng the numbers the yeah. numbers are very different now when you look at you know, you try to rewatch these darn things i'm still stuck in season 4 guys um, but, you know, there's, <laughs> there's like 20, 24 episodes a season and we don't yeah. do that now. They're doing 10 episodes. The quality, however, you, you stand back and look at the quality and you go, you know what? I like the quality a lot. Yeah. I, I really yeah. enjoying the show. I understand that it's a different time and era and we do things a little differently now, you know, and if we're going to do three shows and do them all year round or something like that, to that effect, mm -hmm. I'm all for it because I got, I got to get me some Star Trek. I think I love it. More power to them. Yeah. Yeah. How about you there, Fred? You got any news you want to share with us today? No, I, I think we already covered the news that I was thinking of. You know, the you know the new Space Force logo was mentioned. Uh, Guinan's return. We've already uh, you know discussed that. Um, I think those are a couple of the the major news stories that I was aware of. And how about you, Rocky? Yeah, that's pretty much the big news that I got. I mean, I can talk about enjoying the heck out of liking and 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 uh, following everybody on Twitter. <laughs> because that's a lot of fun. <laughs> you see all kinds of crazy stuff on Twitter. And I, I love seeing the, the diversity of people that we're following on Twitter. I love it. It's good stuff. Um, if I have to accidentally apologize for um, liking someone's picture, she had a R2-D2 sweater on and she didn't even show her face, but the sweater looked so good. I just, even though it was Star Wars, I, I hit the like button and I apologize for crossing the line. Ah, baby Yoda, do, 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 baby Yoda, do, 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 do. <laughs> crossing lines. <laughs> uh, Mandalorian, uh, good show. Anyway. And there's silence. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> On a that's Star Trek it. podcast. It's a different podcast. Different no, podcast. I, I enjoyed the Mandalorian. I, I like Baby Yoda. I Baby Yoda's Mandalorian, cool. So. There, there's yeah, nobody, guys, if somebody doesn't like Baby Yoda, you've got to look at them really close because they might work for Section people, 31. There are people. I'm aware of them. I, I know exactly who they are. And they, they have pretty decent followings, too. So Did you guys see uh, uh, a meme uh, where, they were, where Star Trek was kind of making fun of Baby Yoda? Yes! You know, like... 
like like some Star Trek producers are sitting around and they're thinking, okay, we've <laughs> got to come up with something to compete with Baby Yoda. And someone goes, how about this? Baby Gorn. And then one of the guys goes, we're so dead. This is never going to (laughs) work. I think Rocky posted that on uh, the Starfleet. Yeah, you posted yeah. on Starfleet Underground like social media, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did post that one. That was quite funny. That was good. <laughs> I, I think the baby Gorn could work. It could. I, I'm going to really date myself, but do you, if any of you remember the the old V series and the little little alien oh, yeah. reptile baby, mm. that, that that that'll totally work for me. Some people were terrified by it. I thought it was really cute. <laughs> Let's see. Baby Gorn, do, 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 do. Baby Gorn, do, 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 do. I work. don't know. It could work. Maybe. It maybe. Could work. I've even seen a baby Jabba the, the Hutt. The baby but, Jabba. Oh, that was I cute. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know if you could sing a song with that. That kind of stretches it out a little. Yeah. <laughs> baby Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> <laughs> See, it might work. We, it might, you just swing it a little bit. It'll work. Oh, my God. Um, it was funny. I was, I was wondering about this because you look at our show name, Starfleet Underground, and I think this sounds like the Starfleet version of some reggae show, you know? So I'm thinking musically, we ought to play some reggae. Okay, that went completely flat. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the underground sounds of Starfleet. The, the baby Jabba thing is actually kind of funny because uh, everybody forgets it, uh, which because it's kind of forgettable. But uh, they did a Clone Wars animated movie, and there is a baby Jabba in that movie. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. Okay, I do remember that. That was a cute section of that movie. I do remember. I actually saw that movie in the theater, uh, one of the few. So huh, Cool. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. So enough that we're off topic, right? Uh, can we get back <laughs> onto this uh, wonderful show we yes. just watched like three times? Definitely went on. So when we last saw Picard, uh, you know, he was dreaming about the Enterprise D and playing poker with Data. <laughs> and then he wakes up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then number one comes on screen. Yeah, and he talked French, which was pretty cool. That was cool. Um, boy, which was an awesome part of that, uh, to, to yes. see him on his, his native areas. Yes. One of the things that I really kind of um, enjoyed about this show is that you see his caretakers are there. You get an inkling that there are more than just regular caretakers. And that gets expanded on on some of the, of the other episodes. Um, I might even tell you a little bit about it, provided Section 31 doesn't come in and, and ruin it. Oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. So the caretakers are actually part of the... Censored by Section 31. And you get a chance to actually see them in, in doing that stuff, which is pretty cool. That's so, awesome. Wow. I that knew there were going to be cool. a little bit more than just characters. I know, right? Those guys are great. Interesting. You know, oh, and, I can't wait. It's, it's, it's very, very cool. And remember when we teased about it in the first show uh, that mm-hmm. there was going to be a major death yeah. of a major character? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're not talking guys. about the boyfriend, right? No, he wasn't no, a major character. <laughs> I was so upset when they killed the boyfriend. Oh my God, he had such gorgeous eyes. Yeah, don't very, kill, the, don't kill very, the cute guy. They were very blinky. <laughs> oh yeah, they were blinky, but I, I mean. Girls dig guys that have blinky eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, th- this, this could be an uh, interesting trivia question. Yeah, because someday someone's going to ask, okay, who was the first character to die in the Star Trek Picard series? And that'll be the answer. <laughs> The boyfriend. The boyfriend, yeah. yeah. Whoever that dude was. <laughs> it shows you you shouldn't get a sugary filled drink at the replicator. You know what though? Oh. She only had vanilla drinks. And I I dig that because I love vanilla milkshakes and, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I'm pretty on board the, the, the Dodge thing right there with the drinking vanilla and, and, yeah, and whatnot. Because, yeah. Everyone knows that the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Right. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I'm like, goodness. it's better than yours. <laughs> was that or was that not an epic fight scene oh my god oh yeah. back over her head and then she activates yeah she was blindfolded and she saw everything and it was like instantly she knew kung fu like but mm. more i mean she was whacking them backing them all over the place and then the yeah the, I like the, the the phasers they were having because the the the, the handle grip with the two things, uh, you know, the the shooters, uh, the, the shooters. That's a very technical term, Rocky. Um, 
the above and below the grip. It reminded me of um, the black hole. You guys remember the black hole? Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Those yeah. laser beams. Yeah. I've heard that before. Somebody else referenced that yeah. before. Yeah, it's a very cool design. I, uh, it's very cool, um, and it looked badass in Picard. Yeah, it's like two phasers in one, basically. Yeah, yeah. So it's, really it's cool. you know you would think stormtroopers would have these things because you could double the chance of missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on if they're shooting a red shirt or not. <laughs> <laughs> There's Don't a, miss the red shirt will die anyway. And, and, and that reminds me of another good meme where, yeah, uh, yeah the the stormtrooper is going, I missed, and the red shirt says, I'm dead I'm anyway. Dead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> but those were cool, those, those, the weapons they had. Oh, yeah, but they didn't do them any good because she was quick. Yeah, yeah. Was, that, yeah. That sequence reminded me a little bit of the Matrix and the whole activation thing. Well, yeah, that's why. You the, even said the whole, I know Kung Fu now, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that's, she but, was yeah. just killing. I mean, it's like her, it's like her programming just kicked in. She at that activated. Point. Well, it did. Well, it, because if you remember, we hinted of what she was because everyone's trying to determine whether she was um, Data's daughter <laughs> Who's, whose or, daughter or is Borgen. She? And she actually winds up being <laughs> Data's daughter in a way. Well, yeah. At least that's what the theory I'm, is right now because. Yeah. Oh, it changes. So we've got to change my who's your data T-shirt. My, my Who's Your Data t-shirt is going to get modified a little bit to incorporate the, the, the Dodge uh, synthetic, I think. <laughs> yeah, because prior to episode one airing, you know, there were uh, actually prior to the trailers coming out, there was uh, some speculation that, you know, she might be Picard's daughter. Yep. Right. That's uh, what but, I thought. But, yeah. But, but obviously, based upon what we learned in this episode, that wasn't quite the case. I wanted her to be Picard and Beverly's daughter. So that way, Wesley had a half sister. Oh, Oh, look at you. And he would have something to talk about with the after show. (laughs) (laughs) There There were a lot of fans hoping that was Seven's daughter. I'm disappointed about that. Oh, yeah. Huh. But if if you look at... Eight of nine? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Eight of nine. That's funny. (laughs) If if you look at the... Remember when she was talking to her mother? Um, one of the things that is actually a lead in for later on, you get a chance to see how deep this mystery is going to get this season. When she's talking to her mother, it's like, what's going on, dear? And then she says, people are after me. Mom doesn't even skip a beat. Yeah. That looked she's really like, suspicious. I know. She's is like, she in on, is her mother in on it? Yeah. Or what I is her mother? I, I don't think her mother's real. I think her mother is like a fail safe that, uh, Ooh, like a projection in her head, in her that, head. that tells Maybe. her what to do in crisis oh. situations. Maybe that little that's projection device is actually something, a device just to show us what she's thinking on her, in her head. So that's her eyes are going that's back my and theory. Forth. That's my I like theory that. that she's not, she's oh. not real. You're just a visual effect. That's all you yeah. are. That's my theory. <laughs> you know, but it's really cool. It's like, go with Picard. He'll keep you safe. Yeah. Does that mean someone yeah. hacked into her because? No, it's it's because that's how the mother knows her thoughts is because it's it's a projection oh, of her thoughts. Okay. That's gotcha. my theory. I don't have any inside knowledge. I'm, that's just my theory. Okay. Well, there, there's definitely a lot of mystery still out there because, you mm-hmm. know, she remembers uh, growing up in Seattle. So it, it kind of begs the question, how much of her memories were pre-programmed into her? And at what point did she actually come to life and, and actually truly experience events? Well, in the next episode, you know, when uh, Picard and they went to wait. No, that didn't happen. Yes, it did. Okay. Censored by Section 31. <laughs> And that's when he's able to in, in investigate and find out exactly on her background is at that moment. Okay. So, oh, okay. Gotcha. But, uh. but, but I'm confused because is she or is she not a human? Is she a hybrid? Is she, you know, like a Battlestar Galactica had the skin jobs, you know? She's, she's a biological with a positronic brain. So right? you grow the Does body. That- yes. And then you put the brain in. Yeah. Oh, you you grow the body around the brain, so to speak. So does that mean that at one point she was a little kid and she grew up into an adult and all the time she had this like computer brain in her? Wow. That's a big question, right? How old is she? She could have just been born yesterday for all we know, Whoa. you know, or, or a couple of months ago. That gets answered in the next episode. That actually really? okay. gets answered in, oh. in the next episode oh. okay. they go through. So it definitely puts lotion on his skin. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay this is quite fascinating yeah another question i would have about uh the concept of uh, putting a positronic brain in a basically a human person is what about our enhanced uh, physical abilities because uh during the later uh fight scene 
Um, you know, she's, you know, moving so fast and leaping over stairs. Okay. Okay. Um, I can answer that a little because I'm uber nerd. The human body itself, the reason why we can't do a massive feats of strength and why we can't run super fast is because our body has governors on it. There are limiters that keeps us from hurting ourselves. We're actually can, you hear people getting under stress and they're able to lift a car, and, but if they're not under stress, they can't do it. And the reason why chimpanzees and monkeys and apes are so strong is because they don't have those limiters either. They can use fully 100% of their muscles right off the bat. We never hardly ever do. So I believe that the reason why she was able to do that, because with her positive pranic brain that she has, and who knows, maybe they engineered her bio to be better, but I think that she just uses 100% of her capability right off the bat. And she's just quicker at it than, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's how you beat seven Romulans in, in attack suits. I mean, you're just quicker than well, everybody. You can anticipate and calculate it and execute it. There's also a theory that that sh- that her biological side is that she's an augment, you know, like like Khan. Uh, oh, good good point. Okay. That's a yeah, good that's possibility gonna... too. She's got good genes. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> even nowadays, like in our generation, you're seeing people mess with genes. You're seeing, you know, for example, that Chinese doctor who got in trouble because he altered a, a baby's gene, and now the babies are alive and real, and they're so scared to design our babies. Um, so they're doing that kind of science today. So I could definitely see them picking and choosing what genes they wanted or, you know, altering certain things to make the body that they want to accomplish. Well, I love seeing this because, you know, when we look at sci-fi, it's always about what's going to happen in the future. And then eventually it actually comes real and, and, and we all walk around with cell phones. Um, but uh, today's future is artificial intelligence and genetics manipulation. I mean, the, the writing's right there on the wall. It's just a matter of somebody doing it um, and having the time to explore it and get better at it and perfect it. It brings up all the social issues that we're going to, those questions that we're going to have in the, in the show. I can't wait to see what happens. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Interesting. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the Chinese already use uh, clone police dogs. Ooh, you wear that? No, no, I, I had not hear that. No, I didn't know that. They used uh, cloned canine units. Yeah. Wow. Mm. It's just a matter of, of public acceptance getting into yeah. it because whenever you have new technology that comes, guaranteed there's going to be a sci fi or a horror movie talking about the worst part of that. And that gets the public's imagination right off the bat is that they're going to get scared. Well, and it's always a point where you have an artificial life form. And at some point, the Android, it's basically going to turn on you and destroy you. I, I, it's just it always happens. It doesn't matter if it's a cyborg or an Android or just a regular good old fashioned robot. At some point, it turns on us humans and we have to run for our lives. And uh, I mean, it's already happened in the show. They blew the hell out of Mars. Right. Um, so, wow. I mean. At some point, the synthetics always go bad, right? That's basically a general principle of synthetics. Well, we don't know why they went bad, though. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so if we see that in a lot of different movies, then that doesn't that mean that humans have a basic fear of their electronics, what they created, turning back against them? No, it, it, I think um, what it comes down to, also to, to circle back to Eric just for a heartbeat, um, the next episode, I believe, details on why the synthetics did what they did. Ah, um, okay. A little bit more on the background of that. But what it comes okay. down to is that we're nowhere we're fallible. We're not perfect human beings. And I think the fear comes in that if we create something that can be near perfect, it will see through us and it will turn around and find that, you know, OK, from everything you told me, you guys destroy everything. You don't live in balance. So therefore, you're a disease on this planet. You're, you're causing harm. You're not living in harmony. So we got to get rid of you. That was the whole basis of the Terminator movie. That was the mm. whole basis of the movie called Virus, everything else. I'm just worried so, that Alexa's going to order non-fat milk <laughs> instead of the regular stuff I like to have. Speaking Dude. of which, that was in the replicator this morning. Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm that sorry. Me. 1% milk to me is just is just uh, white colored water. It's an insult, yes, it right? White colored sugar water. What, what do you mean? Yes. Low-fat milk doesn't go well with... It, no, <laughs> no. Even even the gawk got out of the plate and ran from it. Yeah, right. It doesn't like it either. Wait a second. You guys have a replicator? Yeah. So, tell them about the replicator. So, you don't know about yeah. the replicator, dude. No, no I don't have one. DS zero zero. Don't tell so. anybody. We'll hook you up. We're man. section thirty one when you need them. 
<laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're sponsored by Section 31, so every once in a while, they throw us a bone rather than helping us get home all the way. We got yeah. other ways we have to do it, but hey, like transwarp conduit? What transwarp conduit? <laughs> <laughs> you never saw nothing. Nope. We never salvaged yeah. that ship. <laughs> I guess uh, one thing that, uh, I don't know, kind of bothered me a little bit about the, uh, you know, the Utopia Planitia, you know, shipyard attack. I, I was a little little disappointed at, at seeing it uh, utterly destroyed like that because it's it's kind of iconic in Star Trek. Like, like for example, I was watching uh, the Star Trek Voyager episode called Relativity uh, earlier this this week. And, and there's a, like a beautiful uh, scene at the beginning where they, they go back, back in time and you see Voyager back in space stock and you know they they show the the sh- you know the shipping yards and there's like a galaxy class ship under construction and you know you see some other ships you know kind of like leaving space dock and then it kind of zooms in on on uh, voyager so it's it, it's kind of got uh, an interesting history and and you, you see it in a, a star trek next generation episode also like booby trap where you know jordy uh oh, you know, yeah runs the simulation uh Runs a simulation in the yeah, holodeck, and that's yeah, where the, the simulation yeah. is. Yeah. So I, I, I was, I, I will admit, I was a little, a little bit disappointed that they did that. I don't know if they did that just because they wanted to do something big and dramatic, but I kind of wonder if they could have maybe made something else blow up rather than going after something iconic like that. We know, Fred, you mentioned that, and I also have to worry about it. I was reading, you know, actually, I actually got the comic books. I got the first two comic books, and I'm wondering where the third is, because they delayed the third. I'd like to get the third one now. I'm, I'm reading the comics, too, by the way. Yeah. I was going to chime and, in about yeah. that. I, I yeah. think I know where you're going. Jordy is on the, the told, station. Yeah. yeah. He's he's yep. there working on ships and getting stuff built yeah. in, in the comic book. So, and nobody's talking about and that. I nobody's saw somebody, talking about that. Somebody mentioned this on Twitter. If it blew up, where the hell was Jordy when this happened? Is Jordy okay? And that's just the question we don't have the answer to. Oh, jeez. I don't want him to die. Yeah. I hope he won't. I, I imagine Jordy's the kind of guy that'll find the escape pod at the last second, just, you know, fine. Or he'll be in the right compartment that just kind of happened to stay okay. Because yeah. you don't want to kill off Jordy. Exactly, no. yeah. No, you don't want to do that. That That's... Uh, Especially off screen, that would be pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. that'd be horrible yeah, that'd be. in a comic <laughs> book. That yeah, would that would be really bad. Well, they got to have a reason for you to want the to keep keep going. Well, I, I definitely yeah. want that third book. I'm wondering what why it's delayed because I mean, somebody said I was publishing issues, but I'm like, it's a digital comic book. Why come I can't read it? I don't care about the guys reading paper. Well, I, I, I want to see the third one of the story. Well, I had uh, read an article online that uh, the third issue was scheduled to come out after the show premiere. So I thought, oh, it was. Yeah, okay. So it was intentional. I thought it was supposed to be before, but anyway, yeah. yeah uh, so I like the comic books. Um, it's very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not a comic book guy, so I didn't really. I wasn't one of the guys growing up reading the superhero stuff. So it's kind of cool, you know, sit there and read through the. It's good, a good story, and the the imagery is all good, and it's cool to see, you know, follow your characters in these stories that. Yeah. Uh, are completely brand new to you. There's a lot going on in the comic books too. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the comic book story that there's a lot. I don't know how they're going to resolve it in the, the next issue because there's there's a lot going on in that second issue. Yeah. I mean, as a just a side note, um, you know, since Seven of Nine is going to have a prominent role in this series, also uh, Relativity was an interesting uh, episode where Seven of Nine uh, is basically recruited by the Temporal uh, Police from the 29th century, and you know she's going back in time to try to fix some. Uh, you know, some temporal anomaly, hence, you know, why the show starts uh, back in the space dock. You know, you know, Janeway is getting introduced to her new ship by the Admiral, and you see uh, an ensign, uh, well, basically, uh, it's, it's seven of nine, but but she looks, you know, yeah. fully human, and she's in a, a regular uniform, and she's just kind of trying to discreetly uh, survey the ship for the hidden explosive. So it's kind of an interesting uh, seven of nine story, too. I remember that being a good one. A couple of years ago, I went through and tried to, to slam through every Voyager episode before I got to the, the Star Trek convention. Yeah. And that's, uh, I didn't make it. I made it almost all the way through. Uh, that was one of those ones I watched and it was one of the ones I didn't see originally. So it was very cool to see that story and very, very compelling to have her thrown back in time like that. 
Right. I'm looking forward to seeing how time has gone by for her and how much she's matured as a Borg slash human. And you get yeah, a chance to true. see that impact as well on you true. because you is going to be appearing later on down the road also. Well, well you definitely see it on Picard with him, um, you know, gasping for breath as, as they're running. And by the way, I think they said, Will Wheaton said in his show that uh, Picard is 90 right now. Yes. 90 Shabon years old? said that on, on Will Wheaton's show. Yeah, I saw the uh, okay. Ready Room as well. And Shabon yeah. said that Picard's supposed to be in his early 90s. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a little bit, oh so he's a little bit older than uh, Stewart's actual age, if I remember correctly. Well, that's yeah, pretty damn isn't good. Isn't Stewart 70? Like yeah. 79, I think. Seven, okay. He's almost yeah. 80. Because yeah. okay. I've known people who are 90 years old where their family won't even let them trust them turn on the stove by themselves. Or microwave something. Yeah. I've met a guy that was in his late eighties and he was just as fit as yeah. anybody. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's just pretty depends. amazing how, uh, how, how the human body can sure. last that long. But, but in Picard's defense, even though he's old, I mean, he probably hasn't had a real reason to, you know, be exercising and, and, oh, and yeah. running ar- and, ru- and running shape. around on his, uh, you know, vineyard. So I think that was part of it too, that it was, just- I don't know. I have uh-huh. to push back on that because he has a pit bull terrier, which they have a lot of energy and you got to go out and play with them every single day. So I don't know. Oh, about well, that. That, that, that. And also he's probably still in decent shape because Starfleet has excellent medical for retired admirals. True. And he does have that artificial heart. So he's pumping strong. Well, that's a good point. True. Oh, and and he had Borg implants. That's mm-hmm. a good point. So who knows yeah. on that? Plus, imagine how easy it would be in the future if they had teleportation like that. You can oh just my God, like sit at home. Awesome. Your doctor's appointment is here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so when we were watching the card, um, you saw the new teleportation system where it looked like a door and people were walking in and out of it. Yeah, it looked that, like a metal detector and you just walked yeah, right it through like it. Yeah, it looked like a metal detector. I can't wait to see that in actual, because we saw it in the preview still. We haven't seen it in the, in the episode. Correct. Yet, right? uh, Correct. Yeah, you'll see it in the, in the future yeah. episode. It looks really cool. Yeah. Right? And it's like a sideways flipped uh, moving transporter. It's like, that's a really cool. You know. One. Yeah, yeah they, they show that elongated scene on the on the ready room, the ready room show with Will Wheaton. They, oh, they kind of showed that whole sequence. That's where yeah. I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Starfleet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Saw, it, show him walking in the star. Show the whole sequence. Got gotcha. him walking in. And while we're we're talking about that one area where uh, you see the building of I think it's Starfleet, I believe. Uh, did you guys recognize that? That looked like the Anaheim Convention Center. And yeah, I believe that's where they filmed yeah. it. That's, that's where, where they, they filmed, filmed it. it. Okay, I believe so. Yeah, it looked I've nothing been, like San Francisco. I tell I you. Went, <laughs> yeah, right. I went to that. Um, I've been to that convention center so many freaking times for VidCon, and I'm looking at. It, I'm like, I know that. That's VidCon. I know that. And then at the very end, where Dodge is doing the fight scene on the stairs. Oh my God! I would sit on those stairs every single day and eat my lunch because those stairs were the only place where there wasn't like a ton of people people around and I could like get away from people. I'm like, I know those stairs. Wow. I know those stairs so freaking well. Yeah. Now, for I have those pictures of you that live out that, in California, yeah. that is a cosplay location. Remember, yep. if you're in California in Anaheim, go there and you can do some cosplay with the actual background that was in the show. Right. That's Continue. super cool. And, and this convention center, just so you know, it's right across the street from Disneyland. So oh. this is going to tell you like exactly which convention center it is. It's the Anaheim Convention Center right across the street from Disneyland. And yeah, I'm sitting there watching that fight scene and I'm like, oh my God, like I've, I'm so familiar with that area. It's like, holy cow. It just blew my mind wow. watching that. All I got was a CG version of the Golden Gate Bridge with a bunch of solar panels <laughs> on it. And I'm like, I can't do anything with that. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there's a blooper reel uh, version where maybe they get Disneyland in the background accidentally. <laughs> oh my God! Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> that would be least, so cool. At least we know that California lasts, or at least Anaheim lasts, way into the future. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. That's really good because you know we're going to float into the ocean any moment. The, the next click is going to hit, and I'm going to be. If I'm not swimming, I'm going to be saying, "Hey, uh, Heather, how's that uh, ocean yeah. property you got over there in Vegas?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. 
mm. all those people out there in Texas is now we get beachfront property. I mean, they talk about a serious issue. You know, you want to go environmental. Sea level rise is a real thing and uh, it's going to take a few years to get here. But oh, no, it's already here. Yeah. There's people that are being displaced right now. There oh, yeah. are there's areas in Florida where you have high tide and low tide, but now it's all high tide and they're like, we are constantly flooded. And the government is actually thinking about buying out all of the houses and moving people because of the flooding. Yeah. Because, so it's already happening. Yeah, yeah they're, New they're, York's talking about building a seawall. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a real issue that we're dealing with now. But it's good to see they got it solved in the future. <laughs> the anime is still there. <laughs> well, as, as, as far as uh, earthquakes are concerned, um, do you guys remember uh, an episode from The Next Generation? Uh, I think it was called Time Zero, where at the beginning of the uh, episode, uh, the Enterprise is recalled to Earth, and uh, someone is showing uh, Picard and his, uh, you know, his crew some things they found underneath San Francisco, and and the professor makes an offhand comment that yeah, they found these things while they were installing seismic regulators. So evidently, they have seismic regulators in the future that you know, <laughs> control and prevent earthquakes. That would be a nice thing yeah. to have. Not quite here just yet, but coming soon. A couple centuries from now. Well, somebody was um, upset about the solar panels because they were saying how cloudy San Francisco was. And I said, but they have weather regulators in, in Star Trek. They control the weather, you know? Mm, yeah, true. there's that. You know, I, I was kind of wondering about that. The I think the solar panels on Golden Gate Bridge have shown up in the recent past. But uh, when I saw Star Trek, the motion picture a little while ago, when I was rewatching it, it looked like instead of uh, solar panels, they had enclosed uh, tubes on the Golden Gate Bridge, kind of implying that it was. And that was, that was probably before they they've perfected site to site teleportation. Ah, so there you go. Traffic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's more of a recent development. Yeah. So yeah, so why not use the solar panels? That perfectly good place for it. Yeah. Although, uh, well, the, very strange use. Yeah, I, I guess <laughs> the the point I'm getting at is is when they did the motion picture, they kind of envisioned the Golden Gate Bridge as still being used for transportation. It's just that now it was enclosed, so you know you don't have to deal with any you know weather conditions which which i thought was interesting interesting well, i will say that in a, i think it's in the second or third episode i think it's the third i believe it might be the third you get a chance to see futuristic taxis oh, oh. cool hmm. right on well, we didn't see the futuristic bus in the, the Children of Mars. Yeah. Transportation. So, it's all about transportation in Star Trek. <laughs> Speaking of Children of Mars, can you guys explain something to me? Okay, so I heard this like a couple times, but I didn't know what it was. What's Dunkirk? Oh, oh Dunkirk is, is that's actually really back in history. A Dunkirk. Very good, good question. Yeah, they even did a, a movie about it. It was when the English was on a, on a mountain uh, side. And they were being decimated because they didn't have enough ships to evacuate them. They were just stranded out there. The movie takes place about with a guy who actually didn't want to carry a rifle and how he saved a lot of people despite that. But yeah, if it wasn't for all of civilians getting together, if it wasn't for everyone getting personal private ships to get out there to rescue them, they would have been slaughtered. It would have dealt Great Britain a big, big blow. And so civilians took their ships and saved thousands and thousands of, of um, service people. I'm confused. So this is a movie or is this history? No, this is it's history. A, it's, it's a, a real, real, okay, it's a real historical event. It's a, it's a major event in World War yeah. II. Yep. Oh, okay. That's I'm bad with history. That oh, explains no. why I don't know no, this. Okay. What happened is that there was a bunch of, of, of military personnel that Britain has. I forget the exact number, but it was in the thousands. Like 300,000. It's about 300,000 troops that rescued from Dunkirk. Okay. And because they had no way off of it and they were going to be slaughtered. And uh, Great Britain didn't have the ships necessary in order to rescue those men and get them out of there. So they put out a call and everyone who had a boat from dinghies to everything, everybody who had a ship came through to help rescue them. And that's what the premise is where you find out more about that when he wanted to rescue the Romulans. And he talked about, you know, your history about Dunkirk oh. because they wanted to use all of the ships to yeah. get the Romulans out of the blast to radius. Get everything out to go save and help because they were talking about millions and yeah. millions of Romulans. Oh, OK. I was wondering how it related. OK, got it. Yeah. And that's how part of the comic book started. They talk about uh, needing to evacuate everybody. Yeah. OK. And in that interview, in that same interview, I really liked how he said, um, you know, they were saving lives and they're like, oh, Romulan lives. And he's like, no, lives. lives. Yeah. yeah. Just period lives. I didn't like the fact that the reporter seemed to have that uh, kind of a, I guess, for lack of a better term, that specious kind of view. 
The, yeah. the reporter didn't seem very evolved to me. I, I did not that, like really the <laughs> presentation of the reporter yeah. industry too, because, uh, it, you know, if you get that journalist upbringing, it's a kind of reporter that some of us look at and go, well, you've got an agenda with what you're doing here. You're not trying to actually tell a story. You've got an agenda. You're trying to shape it. And mm-hmm. you are suddenly being called fake news because of that. It, it, it rubs you the wrong way, if, if I could explain it. Well, um, uh, So, yeah, yeah. It, it, but, you know, you just don't come out and ask the admiral questions like this. It's kind of not cool. And you remember in the beginning, they said not to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You agreed absolutely not to do it. And then when you go and do it, you ask him. Exactly. Anyway. And uh, the Romulan uh, caretaker, you know, he said that, yeah, he had talked to her and, you know, she'd agreed three times that, yeah, she wasn't going to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the whole yeah. thing. Like, that's what I got from it. Like, oh, she said she was going to talk about this different subject that she knew Picard wanted to talk about. And no, we won't talk about what I really want to talk about. And then as soon as the camera is rolling and we're live, we're going to do what I want right. to do because now I got you where I want you. So it's that manipulative type of, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 dirty. It's yeah. real dirty as a, uh, a journalist. Did you guys catch that uh, in the montage that they were doing prior to the interview where they were kind of showing, you know, past images of Picard? They actually showed Worf. Yes, I, yes. No, I missed they, that they, part. So that, that debate is kind of over, I guess, as far as the look of the Klingons and Star Trek Picard, because uh, they oh, showed yeah. Worf on screen from that little montage yeah. directly from a TNG episode. Hmm. Yeah. So if you look with Discovery, Klingons are looking more in the latest reason of Discovery. They're looking like the Klingons we know. Oh, um, thank they goodness. had a little backstory on the reason why they look so different because they had claimed that during war times in the early Klingon civilization, when they went to war, they would ball their heads. They would shave all their hair off. And that's why they looked the way they did. That's why in the uh, next season of Discovery, you saw when um, Mary Chifo, she had a full head of hair and she almost looked like one of the Ursula sisters. And so they're beginning to grow the hair back. Hmm. I love that they're trying to trying to do it. I just kind of have to sit back and laugh at it because the Klingons have never yeah. looked consistent throughout the entire series. And you just got to giggle at it and go, guys, you, you're freaking out over something that's not really that big of a deal. Oh, oh, I although I, I, oh there, there are people that love their Klingons, yeah. man. Oh, Klingons. I, I mean, love. they're all about Klingons. That's yeah. that's the only yeah. reason they like Star Trek is for I the was Klingons. One of those. I love Klingons so much, but I have to stand back and go, yeah. I, although <laughs> yeah. I, I would say that the differences in the Klingon appearance, let's say between Star Trek, the motion picture, and not including Discovery, those differences were more subtle, you know, smaller changes. I think there was more of a, a giant leap in appearance when you went from everything before to discovery and i think that's why you have people reacting the way they did i'm one of those people i really did not like that but like i said apparently they showed i mean wharf was in it i mean they showed the image of wharf yeah i mean it was it was a basically a a snapshot from one of the previous episodes it looked like uh one of the times that uh, he and picard were on chronos you know addressing the high council yeah i mean it's your typical file footage from the news uh section yeah Yeah. i I called it the uh, klingon c-span there you go. The yeah. C-span because, because it's from the council chambers. So it's, it's interesting that the the news network had the abbreviation FNN. So I don't know if that's like CNN's uh, corporate great 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 uh, grandson, so to speak, or. So FNN. The f- this news segment is brought to you by the Federation News yes. Network. Oh, I was thinking fake news. <laughs> do, do you want to know more? <laughs> well, maybe it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, how about, how about this? The Ferengi News Network. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. That, yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. All business, but, all the time. Okay, now, if it, was the, if it was the Ferengi News Network, then the reporter's fine. The way she acts <laughs> and everything is fine. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's if, it, if she's the Federation News Network, we got a yeah. problem. So. Yeah. I, I would Make think on the Ferengi News Network, wouldn't the, the female reporters be uh, nude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Ferengi uh, News Network, where we have the lobes for information. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be a business no, that would. you guys, <laughs> it would. It would go press Latinum. Talk about a paywall. Now, did you guys watch the the after show, right? What did you yeah. think of how Will went and how do you think Will did? I liked it. Yeah. I can't wait to see more. I was actually upset it was only 20 minutes. I, I really liked what they did with it. I think they did it completely respectfully and as, as good as they possibly could have done that. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very well done show. I liked his, his contagiousness. Yeah, his contagiousness uh, was good. How, how he was enthusiastic as a fan would be. You can see he's still a fan. 
fan of the show, just how excited he was about everything that was right. on it, which was pretty mm-hmm. cool. But I love that he still has that personal tie-in too, because he was physically there during this generation uh, for exactly. much of it. So um, yeah, I dig it. I think he's the perfect guy to do the show. Yeah, I'm glad they asked him. And I like how he is adding new content to it. So it's not just him like rehashing what we just saw. It's like he's talking to the showrunner. He's talking to the director. He's giving us clips of, you know, the actors talking about it and new parts of the next episode and all this stuff. So it's all new, like, things. He's not, you know, regurgitating what we just saw. I was really impressed with with Shaban's candor. I I thought he kind of gave some really, really cool insight into the process of, of actually pitching and getting Picard on, on screen. Well, I like to hear the story uh, that they sent him that 35 page thing or whatever. Yeah. And, and then they threw it out and rewrote it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) I'm curious what was in that document because that's what got Stewart into it. Right. That's right. And and the other thing is he, they, he admitted that the first pitch that he was not involved with Patrick Stewart hated. Yeah. So I I like that kind of inside, inside scoop. I I was really impressed with the candor that Siobhan had. It's always fun to hear the behind the scenes stories behind the scenes. Um, It is. Because you love these episodes that we grew up watching and you just wonder about the behind the scenes stuff. Plus it's fun for people who like are sort of into that, you know, into the whole electronics part of it. What camera are they using? How are they doing this? You know, what, like that just, it's so freaking interesting. Yeah, it's great to get all that behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, the writing process too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the writing process Mm -hmm. in Hollywood is pretty fascinating. So (laughs) it's kind of neat to, to hear the, the method of their their madness because those writer rooms are kind of madness. It, it would so. be fascinating to see those two uh, original scripts to yeah just see see yeah. how the story evolved uh, from one version to the other. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see Shaban's original pitch. I would love to see that. Yeah, they'll sell it one day for a million. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Making an alternate no alternate universe. <laughs> Coming to a <laughs> Star Trek convention there. near you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now for those of you here are our listeners, we got a little bit of a homework assignment for you. This will help you get ready for the second episode because we've already seen it multiple times, of course, when you trapped out here in the Delta Quadrant. We, we don't have a whole lot else to do. But for those of you who want to prepare for the next episode of Picard, go see the ninth episode of the second season, The Measure of a Man, where it kind of shows you for those, I'm sure that everyone on the ship remembers, that's when they try to classify data as a possession and not as a person. Yeah, that's a it good is. episode. And so you get a chance to get a more of an understanding of Picard and how he holds true to his principles, as well as why he's so passionate about data. As And that actually is a changing in Starfleet where they considered him just as an android to be an actual person. I loved when Picard actually called him a man when he was describing him to Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. was, he's a man. It, that data was a man. Um, I yeah. love that the way he described it. It was beautiful. It was. And B4 didn't even come close. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why B4 was stuffed in the drawer. Yeah. Yep. B4 in a drawer. You know, you know what, one thing that surprised me about that scene is um, there was a, a comic book prequel done right before the 2009 Star Trek movie came out. And in in that comic book story, B4 had actually become data, you know, that B4 had basically been able to assimilate uh, data's memories and integrate them into a system. So he had effectively become data and he was now the captain of the Enterprise E in that comic book story and, and Picard was uh, an, an ambassador at that point. Well, there's, so, there's no coincidence yeah. that the Picard comic is also called Countdown. It's, it's meant to kind of erase the previous Countdown comics. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's the same title. It's Picard Countdown and it, it, it's obviously a reference to the previous comic book series you're referencing. Yeah. Well, I know comic books in general, it, it's kind of subjective in terms of what's considered canon and what isn't. And, and that, that seems to you know change over time. But it's just interesting that when they did the official prequel to 2009 Star Trek, they, they took a little bit of a different spin on it. But what I'm kind of wondering about is uh, whether we've seen the last of B4 or maybe as the series goes on uh, or the season goes on, are they going to find maybe some way of maybe bringing Data's memories back. Oh, no. No way. No. Like, that well, dude's stuffed in the drawer. He's good. Whenever you don't want anything, like, all the crap gets stuffed in the drawer. So he's <laughs> going to be staying there for a while. <laughs> One of the things that Brent Spiner gave in his interview is that he agreed to do Picard under one condition, that they do not undo 
his death in Nemesis. Okay. So that's a good point. I don't believe he's going to come back for that because I feel less as him as an actor, as well as data that would cheapen the fact that he sacrificed himself. Yeah. yeah. There's no real repercussion for, for an ultimate sacrifice like that. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, what happened to lore is what yeah, I'm Yeah, exactly. Now, I was going to bring that up vapor- too. Nobody vaporized lore. Lore is part someplace too. Yeah, because he was, yeah, but he was Brent, disassembled. Bren always liked playing lore a lot. So I could see him being like, oh yeah, that's cool if I play lore. Or that's all good, but dude, I don't want to play Data anymore. Well, maybe this this other doctor um, of cybernetics. Um, oh, Agnes. Yeah, yeah Maddox. Maddox. Maddox yeah. Uh, maybe the, he's got a little bit of lore lying around because, you know, you would think Lord be in the second yeah. door if I would have put him someplace, maybe somewhere else, and maybe Lord's going to make an appearance. And, and Bruce. Well, you know, the young lady he went to go talk to. The blonde? Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be making much more appearances. Yeah, that, that's Agnes. Maybe, um, Agnes Gerardi. Yep. Maybe Dodge's real dad is lore Ooh. <laughs> there you Please, go. No, I, I like not. that i like that well, I like that'd, how, be a, that'd be a twist that'd yeah, be a you twist. have them in pairs right so you got the yeah. good pair and the, or the good side and the bad side so that would make uh if you go from the data and lore you've got the pair that's maybe true. that's maybe maybe that's there's, there's something point. to that maybe there's something yeah. to that you mean you get the B side and the yeah right A side and the <laughs> you got the the tracks that weren't always as good but some people like them you know uh, <laughs> interesting nice um, another uh, interesting point uh, Bruce Maddox the uh, the doctor that was mentioned uh, that's the same guy that appears in Measure of a Man yes. you know, the, Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah the- that would make sense to me because that line of, of story right there, you wonder, because at one point they wanted to have an army of synthetics and that's what his goal was. So that's apparently what happened. And apparently it went bad. It, it, it's brought up on the next episode. So you'll be able to see what happened. You got to pay attention because it's subtle indications on, on what causes the event. And by the third episode, you understand. Censored by section 31. And that's exactly why they triggered like mm. that. So okay. it's going to be pretty cool. Is the girl a therapist, the twin on uh, the Borg ship? Is she like a therapist? Kind of, yeah. She's a scientist. She's a yeah, scientist. Actually, you, yeah, that's you get I more said. on that on the next yeah. one. You she's get a got chance the same to see a necklace. Bit more. She's got yes, the same she necklace. Does. So, uh... Is that if you notice the necklace, the design, um, when the bird of prey showed up at the... That was a great transition. The trans, You notice that there's an a anomaly in the sky and the space that you see behind it. It's shaped exactly like the necklace. Oh, oh yeah. Um, okay. Now, it's almost time for us to start wrapping up. However, however, one of the things I'm going to bring out to you, if any of you listeners have any questions, um, suggestions, you want to talk about the homework, anything else you can reach us by email on the collective or one word at starfleetunderground.com again that's the collective at starfleetunderground.com it's all one word all together you can find it in our show notes and everything else someone will usually pick up the messages from the communications panel and we'll get back to you and who knows maybe we even read your comments or suggestions on the show how cool would that be that would be great So we're getting ready to wrap up here. It's almost towards the end. Does anybody have any last things they want to say or promote? Uh, I do want to give a shout out to my co-host from the Retro Rogues Live, uh, Dave Beatty. And he has a digital comic called Red Skirts that you can find at uh, redskirtsonline.com. Star Trek fans, I think, will really appreciate this comic book. And it is uh, the digital version is free. Oh, you said free for will be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> the F word. <laughs> Seriously. How about you there, Fred? No, I don't have anything, uh, anything additional. Just, uh, you know, like you said, Nathan, take a look at measure of a man and be sure to stream the next episode of Star Trek Picard. Looking forward to it. And Rocky. I uh, have been keeping my eye out for Section 31 because I know they're on to me now because of Heather. Because they, they know I, I know Heather and they know I'm in <laughs> oh. I've been seeing these. I think it's they're, they're, they roll around in Teslas because those cars <laughs> have a lot of sensors on them. And I saw like 12 different Teslas throughout the day the other day. Um, so I'm really concerned the appearance of Teslas. I'm, I, I might be a a little paranoid about this but I, I think it's a pretty good way to keep a tab on somebody and then uh, and of course you know you get the occasion where your computer just suddenly slows down for no apparent reason uh-huh, yep. right right so I, i'm being cautious over here well 
I think <laughs> they stopped watching Heather as much because the other day I could have sworn I woke up and saw Section 31 standing in the corner looking at me. But then when I blinked, <laughs> they were gone. However, when I went to the restroom, there was a black com badge on the sink. Oh, so. I don't know whether uh, or not if they used the facilities and washed their hands and yes. forgot to put it back or took a shower or whatever. <laughs> but yes. they're, they're around there somewhere. Could you graze noticed- anybody on that com badge? <laughs> I tried. <laughs> oh, okay. I noticed the same thing. Those jerks took all of my cereal. They took all the cereal I had left and I had no cereal, cereal this morning and I know it was them. Mm, we got to watch out for them. But the show is still being brought to you by Section 31. So thank you for joining us this week. We look forward to seeing you again next week. And please, just don't have a good week. Make it so. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G. And on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.